Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Thinking in West North. We are going to cast a game that was played as part of round of 16 of the West North 2020 Live Cup tournament. We are going to see Short Cat versus um, this particular player here. I haven't seen his nickname yet, so Short Cat. And I'm going to reset to the beginning. Hopefully this will prevent any issues from occurring. And the map is, as I said before or not, it's Howling Ghost Badlands. This is an incredibly interesting map. So as you can see here, you have this particular village on the leftmost extremity and also this particular village on the rightmost extremity. So it's always a case of balancing out the attack on the left with the attack on the right. Usually red uh, I mean, player one would attack on the left-hand side, would attack this village, and player two would attack this village. It's more or less symmetrical, the map. So sometimes you do a run-by on the left, but then your opponent does a run-by on the right. You rotate around this middle area. Extremely fun map, and I'm really excited to see these players um, trying to win, and we should have a lot of lessons from which all of us I'm sure we'll be able to learn. With this being said, let's see what these guys can do. So I'm going to hit on continuous replay. And there we go. These are the recruits from our blue player. He obviously went with three calves. Strong, resilient, lucky guy. Uh, strong, intelligent, I would say reasonably lucky. And resilient, intelligent, excellent traits for his calves. And also, this fencer uh, is a... Is this a village? No, dirt flat. So he is planning on... Hmm, uh, I think he went a bit overboard with these recruits. I think he could have simply um, recruited these three calves. There was no need for this fencer. Uh, it would be very interesting to see what is his plan. Um, but who am I to judge? I am not in this game. I haven't played this map in absolutely ages. So excited to see what kind of plans <clears throat> our blue player has. So obviously grabbing those two villages and moving the fencer forward. Now, in terms of red, I see exactly the opposite. Red only recruited two scouts. Uh, so that would be... I think it would be okay on this map considering that he is undead and he needs to see first what his opponent is. He does not want to invest, for example, into ghosts, to bats, especially in this map. It seems like a wide map. However, uh, I feel skirmishes, commando versus commando, are very important. And uh, this will, um, you know, having bats will obviously weaken the unit composition of the red player. Now, he is obviously going to recruit and uh, didn't get a glimpse of that. So we're going to just look at the full map. So there are Red's recruits and it's going to be uh, two ghouls, which I assume he wants to put this ghoul on that village over there. So he's going defensive mode which unfortunately for him going defensive is not a good idea versus loyalist however um you know having the ghoul on one extremity and another ghoul in this village i guess it's a must in order to uh defend any any type of aggression that would have been i would say a decent recruit versus a, an orc rush however versus loyalist it's a bit uh it's a bit tricky I and mean, you see he did, went, he did go with two ghouls, however, he recruited an archer, which is, um, so he was basically saying, okay, this is against a rush, and maybe perhaps also against um, a uh, hodo uh, run by a, a dwarf, run by with footpads, and this is for loyalists, so he has a good mix. I mean, ghouls are, are always nice, don't get me wrong. Anyway, uh, let's move forward and see what our loyalist player does. So he's grabbing all those villages. Again, I don't think it would have been necessary to recruit the fencer here. 
he could have waited, retreated the fencer on this keep, and then the fencer, well, now if I think about it, so he recruited the fencer here, the fencer needed two, um, two turns to grab this village. Had he not done this, had he recruited the fencer on this intermediate keep, then uh, his leader would have needed, for example, one turn, two turns to recruit, and on the third turn, the fencer would have made himself useful. So useful to keep in mind if you do want a, oh, two horsemen. I didn't even see that. So he did go with another horseman on the intermediate keep. And he has two horsemen. He has two calves and one fencer. Absolutely no spearmen. If a red was orc, I would say that, um, well, it's difficult to say that uh, blue would have been in a difficult situation. Because with this kind of leader, so I think he's, he's going with this greedy recruit simply because he has this absolutely... Uh, marvelous leader. So this leader can 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 withstand any attacks. Can take back villages. It would it can even uh, you know even deal some damage on on melee attacks. Um, anyway, so he can get away with this greedy build. Again, this is what loyalists can do, especially because of this leader. No spearmen, as you can see, and none of them in sight. And now these horsemen are going to become a pain to deal with for our undead player. Now, let's see how undead deals with it. And I will just change point of view. Undead does not even know <clears throat> what is coming for him. And now he's about to see and he's like, oh no, I can, I can assure you there are tears in Korg's eyes at this moment when he saw this leader. And uh, that is going to... Uh, that is going to hurt now. He can't really mount an attack, not with ghouls. Maybe if he had a skeleton, it's always good to get a skeleton. So from this perspective, a skeleton might have been better. A skeleton on this village is also a strong defender. Not only the ghoul is. Um, anyway, I think he went for the long game, and now I think Red is regretting it a bit. Um, but anyway, even with, with, with these skeletons, uh, it's diff really difficult to put pressure against this type of leader. So I um, guess not much lost there. Now, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, Blue's recruits, he's even going with a heavy infantryman. So this is basically saying, my leader is absolutely so strong that I don't even care that much about my unique composition. I'm going to go for a heavy infantryman, um, which basically is going to deal with absolutely any skeleton aggression that uh, Red might might try to do. Um, well, it's also the distance to this village. As you can see, the distance to this village is basically one move for the heavy infantryman, the second move. So no matter what is on this village, the heavy infantryman would be able to reach it in. So in one turn after recruit, the heavy infantryman would be able to put pressure. So although it's, it's a wide map where mobility is important, it feels like the central area is, can really be abused by low uh, movement units like the heavy infantryman. Um, plus, um, don't know. I mean, the only way you could play against heavy infantrymen is with adepts which countered them, and then try to finish them off with walking corpses. Um, that would be, I mean, that's the only way that I see Red winning in this uh, particular game. Uh, trying to recruit walking corpses, trying to withstand an attack, and then slowly kill loyalists' units one by one and replacing them with walking corpses. And the fact that I don't see a walking corpse yet, and to be fair, this is a scary, scary team to be going against, a scary unit composition. The fact that I don't see these walking corpses, then um, I am a bit worried. Um, anyway, let's see what is going on here. Okay, so he chooses to form a line, a defensive line. Um, also gain these, um, um, let's say, good terrain positions. So he's basically saying, look, whatever you decide to do, I am here and I will be able to go either way. However, regarding this leader placement, 
one, two, three, four, five. He could have gone one more, one more tile. Why? So he could reach this key. Now he's kind of stuck on this side, and 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 Blue knows it. And if Blue wants, he could take advantage of it. So he could, for example, recruit a mage. So it would be full of. I, I, there will be no speemen on this map. It will have to be another mage, and this will be an absolutely devastating attack on the left-hand side once dawn comes. Um, but we shall see what blue decides to... Okay, another another heavy infantryman, uh, which is, uh, I would say, let's say full map here, another heavy infantryman. So um, he's basically going to rely on infantrymen to deal damage instead of mages. In in this case, I feel that to be honest, I feel that the uh, that our red undead should just recruit another ghost, another ghost, uh, because there are no mages in sight, um, and obviously you will never be able to kill ghosts with heavy infantrymen. You might if you're lucky. However, heavy infantrymen have um, uh, let's say uh, thirty percent defense on flat, whereas the ghost can be wherever it wants. And it could uh, run by all these calves now. Um, it's 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 really interesting to see uh, how this will unfold because the uh, the heavy infantrymen are slow. So if you do do if you do make a run by with the ghosts, you might be able to get behind enemy lines, and they are also expensive. Um, so I would like to see another ghost, and then I would like to see more more skeleton archers. So. I'm not sure whether Blue wants to discourage the recruitment of skeleton archers, but if uh, Korg recruits skeleton archer and a ghost, I would be absolutely pleased with that. I'm not particularly thrilled about adepts at this time. Why? Because even if it's night, we all know that in uh, three turns it will be uh, day and uh, adepts would be absolutely useless. So I would like to see a ghost, a skeleton archer, and a um, walking corpse and if a mage comes then uh, an adept however for two infantrymen and for these amounts of calves i would say a ghost would be fine simply because if 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 the uh, uh if the blue leader decides to push forward there's no way red player can can defend against that he will have to basically rotate around and so I would like to see a ghost on this flank as well. Try to do a run by with the ghost. Um, however, these horsemen, they are just a pain, pain to deal with. Uh, anyway, let's see how this uh, plays out. I don't see Undead having a lot of chances with this defensive stance uh, during first watch. However, I don't blame him. There isn't much he can do. Perhaps pushing these units more aggressively. Um, it's you know it's too late. Adepts can't really do much at this point. They are not in range of hitting any any village. Um, he I feel uh, with these two goals he kind of lost his tempo for attacking. So he will need to play a defensive game versus the mobility and strength of these horsemen and this particularly painful leader. I don't see uh, undead situation very very well. At this point, so he's trying to push forward, stay away from the red mage, right? And um, that is, let me see the calf movement speed. So it's default era that makes it even more painful for undead because calves have this amazing mobility. Uh, now, this ghost can be surrounded, and given how many units we have on this flank, and given the fact that dawn is about to break. I would say surround this ghost, push your heavy infantrymen forward, um, push your calves forward, and just take these two villages, keep grabbing villages here, um, and um, play catch up on this side, right? So there is an attack coming on the, on the left-hand side. What I would do, I would personally surround the ghost and... Um, I would I'd personally surround the ghost and mount an attack on the left hand side, forgetting about this particular village. I, I would let this village go. Um, or given that one, two, three, four, five, six, 
one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So I would even leave the horseman here, to be honest, because only two units can reach him, and but those two units can reach him only from one tile, right? So if you put the horseman here, the adept can only attack from this tile, 27.17, and a skeleton archer can only attack from 27.17 as well, as I am terribly mistaken for five, yes. So the horseman will be fine. I will even leave, you know, if I do want to take risks, I will leave the fencer here, no problem. And I will see how uh, how well he can dodge. It's a resilient, strong fencer. I will definitely leave my horseman on this village so it can backstab the Dark Adept. And at the same time, I will be pushing forward with my unit on the left-hand side, surround the ghost, make sure the ghost doesn't go anywhere, push my heavy infantryman uh, forward as much as possible, recruit a mage, and push my red mage leader forward to grab this keep, which at this point cannot be covered by anything and killing the ghost will particularly hurt the mobility of the red player this is this is how i would play this let's see how uh, our um, our blue player decided to play okay he's going the defensive route so he's not going for aggression there is the mage though and uh, he is basically saying look i'm just going to defend here if you want to move forward be my guest but moving forward is basically pushing these units into a meat grinder. So I'm, I'm, I highly doubt our undead player is going to do this. So again, as I said before, both these units, the archer and the adept, can reach this village. However, it's going to be um, difficult. Mind, be mindful of the fact that if uh, red does attack now, it will be done next. So uh, I feel that the cleanup crew uh, with these horsemen, these horsemen, these heavy infantrymen, this cav, the cleanup crew, plus the red mage is going to be absolutely ruthless. So I don't see um, our red player attacking into this. He can if he takes risks, but uh, let's we shall see. Okay, he's also going back. So cautious play from both these uh, sides, and now. I'm really not sure uh, what, uh, where to attack. You see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe five and a half units on the left-hand side. Um, to be honest, I would... So there are three archers in this point, in this, in this particular area. So I will avoid, I would avoid these archers. However, this particular archer can be surrounded, so I will go... There are just four units and they are scattered around and Adept is on 40%. That was, I think, a slight mistake from our red player. So I expect this Cav to simply attack the Adept from the middle of the field. This particular heavy infantryman pushing forward. Uh, I expect even the horseman. Oh my god, the horseman can reach the skeleton archer. I expect the horseman attacking the skeleton archer. The mage pushing forward. Uh putting pressure even the mage here on the on the mountain that would be a particularly good placement to kill the ghost and uh so for example i would say yeah this in the middle of nowhere i would say horseman here the mage in the middle of nowhere uh, no not in the middle of nowhere sorry uh on on the mountain to be able to reach the ghost on this particular now, the mage even here it will block the ghost from reaching the village and also so again um there you go. Cavalryman here, attacking the Adept. Horseman here to basically um, try to impede the retreat of the Skeleton Archer. Mage uh, here to block the Ghost and also put more pressure on the Skeleton Archer. Or not even here, or maybe on the mountain and one, two, three, four, five. That's an excellent placement. And the leader maybe to... The, I mean, Ghost should not even be... Um, I feel that the ghost should not even be discouraged from taking this village simply because if the leader decides to move uh, on, on in the back, then the leader will be punishing the ghost dearly for that. Um, at the same time, it can be less aggressive. So horseman could be on the left-hand side because the horseman could reach anywhere. And then all these units could move forward into the, towards this village. So there are several other ways to play. For example, this horseman here would be blocking the ghost and will be blocking uh, absolutely everything happening from the left-hand side. Also, will put a lot of pressure on these units if they stay. This particular calf here, 
and attacking the adept, putting some damage in, impeding the retreat of this skeleton archer, and then mage forward, leader forward, another mage being recruited, and even this calf could take a more central position to be able to support in case something happens. Um, I would even say the heavy infantryman can stay on this particular village in case archers do decide to push forward. Um, so it should be absolutely fine. I feel that blue can focus now if he wants to on a massive attack on the left hand side, but let's see what he decides to do. Okay. Again, caution is the name of the game. Apparently I wouldn't have played this way. I believe it's too cautious. So he, he decides to, he's, he's scared of this ghost run by, which again, I would have blocked it with this particular horseman. I wouldn't have bothered uh to be that cautious but i guess he is saying look i i'm trying to attack with this heavy infantryman uh my attack is as advanced as this heavy infantryman is as you can see he he even puts the um cav into a central pos more, more of a central position he doesn't care about this village knowing that the leader can take it away in a heartbeat and he, I'm a bit surprised, he decides to push with uh, heavy infantryman on the left hand side, seems such a waste moving this heavy infantryman left and right, but we shall see. Um, okay. So our red player finally got to this keep and he is recruiting skeleton archers. I don't blame him, he should recruit more. Um, ghosts now a ghost doesn't look like a good prospect considering these two mages and the third mage so yeah um it's uh, probably better that he did not recruit another ghost but again i would have played this a bit differently perhaps even more aggressive on the left hand on the right hand side uh let's see here can we have a run by probably not um probably not that is out of the question in terms of these units they are not doing much they are um, basically uh, threatening this particular village and they are threatening to grab this keep and to surround this fencer, making it difficult for the blue leader to reinforce. So one, two, three, four, five, five and a half units on the right hand side, putting some pressure. However, they are still far away from this particular horseman. That would be the where the archers would want to be, you know, close to this horseman to deal damage and threaten the village. They are still far away. And I, I get it, he does not want to be on 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 40%, but considering the massive attack that is coming on this side, maybe he should have been more aggressive. However, this is this is still fine. This is still fine. So let's see how a blue decides to play it. He did, oh, that was actually something I did not notice. So this particular village was left uncovered by our undead player and i don't agree with this obviously that is basically a free village uh all the units are out of position to grab this village back that is a huge move um that is a present which i'm sure korg did not want to give to our uh, blue player but that adds so much more momentum to uh the blue side's attack and look at this army of mages. Basically, he uh, Blue is saying, look, I'm going to have a human shield with calves which die relatively slowly during the day, at least. And then I'm going to have a wall of mages that will absolutely burn everything in their path. Again, I would like to see the red player have a walking corpse simply because walking corpses are very cost efficient versus mages. I mean, a mage a hit versus a walking corpse is simply a waste of time. However, with him losing this village, uh, it's going to be difficult to recruit both units and supplement with walking corpses. We shall see how he decides to play. This is really interesting at this point. So he probably thought that, look, I can let this village be simply because I can reach this horseman with my leader. However, reaching the horseman with your leader is unfortunately not enough. Now he will have to basically retreat with all, the, all these units, I feel, try to close prevent this horseman from pillaging even further. Um, I would say that even these mages could kill the hero. Uh, well, I would expect the ghoul to get on the forest and try to prevent, limit the, the movement of these mages. So let's see how this goes for him. He does need all the damage in the world. He does hit twice, which is, which is good news. Good news. However, he can't really reach with any other unit. 
except the adept. So he would need two out of two with the adept with the adept, and that would be that would be absolutely critical, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see if this happens or not. He could also bring the ghost. However, ghost is food for all these mages. And he does bring the adept. He needs two out of two. This is a really important uh, moment in the game. Does he get two out? And he gets it, ladies and gentlemen. That is absolutely exciting. Now, red does stand a chance. He would need to hit with the bat. He would need to get the kill with the bat. If he doesn't, he is in absolutely deep trouble. So, will he play with the bats? That is the question. I feel that this horseman is going to do a lot of retaliation damage. However, I don't see why not use the bat. And this is really important. I can't really stress it. And the bat gets the kill. We have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. So, there is this huge army of mages coming towards the red leader. And uh, red does need to put this particular ghoul on the village ASAP. I would say put the skeleton on the forest as well. Put this skeleton archer on the village to at least deal some retaliation damage against those mages and try to do a run by with the ghost on the left hand side because the ghost is more or less useless here. At least this is how I feel. And all these units that were going to do a run by, I feel that they have two choices either come back home. And I would say, come back home, help with this attack. Uh, this is what I would personally do after killing that horseman. I would like to basically keep this bat alive. I would like to discourage him from attacking the bat because a level one bat is absolutely marvelous on this map, right? So from this perspective, I would try. However, he could also push forward with the skeleton archers, attack this village, try to do a run by again, a skeleton archer here would pin three units and threaten another village would be absolutely amazing. Then another skeleton archer could push on this particular hill. However, uh, this again would be risky um, in terms of this army absolutely much. Four mages. I feel he needs all the support he can get. But again, um, maybe even the ghoul, ghoul on this particular uh, keep would be amazing. Followed by the skeleton archer on 60%, then this skeleton archer on the hill, then this skeleton archer on the forest. Perhaps the dark adept can come back home. However, be mindful of the run by from this horseman. However, a level one vampire bat can absolutely deal with that. So it's really interesting to see how our red player is going to play this. He does cover the village. I would say bring the skeleton on the forest. You do want to protect your adepts. Not a problem if your skeleton was such a bad recruit, to be honest. There was no need. Skeleton archer would have been so much better. Not sure why he went for the skeleton. Even a ghost would have been better, I think, than the skeleton. Uh, anyway, so let's see. Play single move. Okay, skeleton archer here. He wants to discourage the mages from pushing forward. And he will be pushing the skeleton. I would have done it the other way around, simply because, well, it, it depends. I mean, there's a lot of units dealing damage here. I would just, I would have preferred it the other way around. Yeah, he wanted to put some damage into the heavy infantrymen, which is absolutely understandable. Now, given this... Not sure. I will try to do the run by simply because if all these units should have something to fear. So put the adept on 60% far away from uh, the fight, just a village holder. Push the ghost forward simply because if ghost starts taking villages here, it will be absolutely amazing use for the ghost. It's, it's basically mage food in this area. Um, and put the skeleton here since it's the only unit left. And it's very interesting to see what will happen on the right hand side. So that is a bit different than I expected. So he does play defensive with the ghost. He's basically saying, look, I've just killed a horseman. So I have, I feel that I can withstand all these mages. No problem. You want to kill me? Fine. Get some return damage. And then I will be able to finish you off at night because it's already afternoon. I feel this is how Red is thinking. However, these calves now have a target. This heavy infantryman has a target. Well, there are many targets in this game, but uh, I just feel that this is going to die, this is going to die, and then the red mage is going to take the keep. I think this is a bit dangerous, so I feel that the red mage is going to go for the keep. Might as well do a backstab attack with the ghost. You're not going to prevent the red leader getting the keep with the ghost. From this perspective, 
I feel that he's not really using, uh, he's not really abusing the 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 configuration of, of of this map. And he did go back, he did retreat on this side. He said basically, okay, you want to fight? Everybody's going to come and help. I don't really care about your villages. That is absolutely fine. Let's fight. Head on fight versus lead le red leader with all these mages. I think that's not going to end up well, but let's see how. Okay, Red Leader says, I don't care about the return damage. I'm going to absolutely go for it because I absolutely want that keep. And he's going to he's gonna go with the mage. That can really hurt. But and uh, he got one in. That was not too bad from our adept. However, now we have another mage ready to deal damage to the skeleton archer, followed by the heavy infantryman and another mage coming and we have the calf to cover everybody um as a shield but let's see that is amazing ladies and gentlemen our red player doesn't take any damage so it just got interesting right now blue has a choice to make do i attack the skeleton archer uh if if this heavy infantryman got one hit mage would have followed 100 percent but now it's a bit difficult. I would say mage take the village and then cav cover everybody from this particular um, um, tile or from here if he wants to be even more protective of the pro more protective of the mage. Um, in regard what happens on this side, I'm not really sure if he can do a run by. Uh, probably not. And this particular heavy infantryman is doing absolutely nothing. Let's see what's going on. And he goes with the cav forward. This is another movement. I both me and the red player overlooked so basically um now um he said okay i can't kill that many units i might as well get the villages and my red leader is going to be able to recruit a ton of units at this point so now red leader has too many things to do he has target here target here he has another target here uh these units are relatively slow i feel that if they would have pushed and taken villages it would have been a bit better or at least the ghost you know at least get some counter pillaging going uh it feels like a uh, red player is playing a bit as drake however his units do, do have 60 percent 50 percent in one versus one situations they where they can hold their own so he can he can be very very effective while pillaging however let's see how these players decide to play it so again he is threatening the ghost he's basically saying i'm gonna get this village as well because the ghost is absolutely useless and now a run by might not be that effective it might be a bit too late however it can still be done however i'm not sure whether this cav could or could not uh yes the cav can definitely uh stop the ghost's incursion so a run by will not be that effective at this point uh anyway we shall see um how this plays out i'm really excited to uh observe again this leader has not been recruiting in a while he's more interested in dealing with those calves which is which is okay but he absolutely needs to kill this calf he absolutely needs two out of three this is a crucial attack once again two out of three that is that is quite quite good versus strong resilient might not be enough he does need two out of three with this skeleton archer as well absolutely needs that and is he going to get it three out of three brilliant so this looks very very promising right right now however you see because his uh, choices red player is basically forced to play defensively with the ghost which i don't agree this ghost would have been happily roaming or at least would have drawn the attention of two units therefore making this uh, activity uh, of defending activity a bit more enjoyable for our red player a bit more manageable right so uh i don't agree with the ghost though attacking i i don't agree with the ghost attacking it should have been this skeleton make okay so he has another he has another tile so it's fine it's absolutely fine he has another tile there okay and the ghost had not attacked yet so that is again fine i'm wondering if he is going to try to level up the bat this would be incredibly risky i'm not sure whether the bat has any resistance to blade let us see this is really important so blade zero percent so the calf does need two hits to kill the bat so it's a risk will he take it 
I personally wouldn't, but in this situation, considering that I have the red leader right at my doorstep, recruiting units in my face, I need to take all the risks in the world. I would say that that is my only chance. And will he do it? He's doing it. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that must hurt. That must hurt. That is, I did not even realize the bat needed to hit. That was a bad risk to take. That was, to be honest, a terrible, terrible mistake. He should not have used the bat. I know he wanted to level up the bat. He should not have used the bat if he needed two out of two. That was unfortunate with the ghost. He should have planned it a bit better in terms. That's why I said attack with the skeleton um, uh, because the skeleton is useless versus all these mages and impact and all that because it will help you kill this particular cav faster or at least it will leave him with less hit points than the ghost and then the bat will be able to level up that was absolutely sad i was getting um a bit uh, enthusiastic about the uh, red player's defense and his choices however it was not meant to be it seems he does need to finish up this heavy infantryman so i guess that was the reasoning for keeping the skeleton around uh he might go on water it doesn't matter at this point he does need to make sure that he kills this heavy infantryman but you see he uses these adepts now he does not have a another unit to grab the village kill the cav it was just he should have used the bat to grab the village the bat should have been if he if he couldn't kill the cav in one hit he should have used the bat to grab the village the bat should have been the village grabbing unit and it would have been much better than what he did things like this can happen he's going for the mage he's saying you are the damage dealer sir and I am useless as a skeleton. However, I don't agree with this. The skeleton should have finished off the cav, and this village should have been taken back to reduce at least the beat a bit the amount of units that this red mage can recruit. So I don't agree with this. This is absolutely a waste of the skeleton. And now he's going to be forced to use the ghoul. It's it was interesting. It started interesting with a trap, which I thought it was a mistake, but it turns out to have been a trap. However, uh, ignoring the cav is is absolutely oh no oh no that is that is not how you want to play it. I I fully disagree with this. He 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 might say, look, this cav is going to die anyway. He might be a bit shaken from the fact that he just lost the bat, but I'm not sure at this point. I I don't agree with this. That is just basically throwing units into the meat grinder. I know it's afternoon, but these mages still deal a lot of damage during the day. And you have to remember that this is a red mage that doesn't care about time of day. Um, also, this calf should have been killed. There's no reason why this calf should be on this village generating income. But let's see what happens next. Uh, again, more retreats from these red units. And there come the recruits to very potent recruits and the red mage was so close to the keep that he can now again deal damage to this bold skeleton he can even deal damage from the village he can heal and deal damage this was a terrible terrible move throwing units into the meat grinder taking the shore kill at this point and taking back the village would have hurt our blue player even more than what he did look even healing this three out of three that hurts seeing that whenever this happens I feel sorry for undead. Uh, whenever I play undead and I see mages do three out of three, I am particularly sad. And you see this particular cav, it was not killed. Now he has seven hit points. It will be even more difficult to kill. And look how much damage it did. Uh, it's just so sad to see. And now I'm not sure whether there are, I mean, the red leader might just go for this archer because archers are the one dealing damage to calves. And will he do it? Okay, some movement of troops on the... Oh, no! That was 2 out of 2 versus the 20... Versus the 60%. That was incredibly painful. That, that changes the whole dynamics on the right-hand side. Basically, he, he red player lost so many units bringing reinforcements back home. It would be much better to be aggressive with the ghost, with these units, try to take back villages. Now, he can't really defend. He can't really outrun the horseman. There's nowhere for this archer to go. The archer is absolutely 
dead, I feel. Uh, now let's see what's happening here. He is trying to kill as many units as possible. And I don't agree with the fact that Blue did not use his leader. Blue could have used his leader that turn to deal more damage. Uh, however, it seems both players are focused on uh, killing as many units as possible. So for this particular reason, he should have used the Red Mage. Look, he even ignored this particular village, which I agree with. Because Knight is coming, Undead is very potent. Therefore, Blue has to kill Undead's units before Undead units deal their full potential in terms of damage. Now, uh, this is really important here. This Cavalryman needs to die. Otherwise, this would, this would be a lot of wasted time. I feel that this mage is more important than this cavalryman. I think he should just go with this adept. Well, I personally think that at this point, the way this game is going, he could try a leader kill. He could do one adept, second adept, one archer. The archer will absolutely die and the ghost. That would be four units attacking. I'm not sure about chance to kill leader, but if he's not going to go for it, he could at least kill this particular mage. So let's see. Will he go for the leader kill or not? No, he does not. He's going to go for this cav, which I'm a bit surprised because cavs don't deal that much damage. They are amazing shields, yes. However, he gets three out of three. So suddenly this has become a bit more interesting because mages are uh, a bit easier to kill. So let's look at these statistics. Kills three, losses three. So if he can kill the mage, then I would say he is still in a good position um however this this was a bit painful on the right hand side so let's see what happens here okay he kills the mage and then he should take the village and i feel that he should maybe take the village with the ghoul and poison and then use the mage on the i mean he does need to recruit it's been a long time and he does need to recruit him you see had he killed this cav he would have been absolutely fine now he he needs to scramble for units to finish off this cav it's just ridiculous um it's it's unfortunately true i feel that he should kill this mage i think he should he should use the adept on it he should prioritize now because because of the way the game goes he should prioritize the mage rather than the cav Let's see if he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going for the mage. Oh, and he's going to retreat the ghoul. Ghouls are useless. Ghouls are going just die versus everything. So why not? I mean, ghoul should have poisoned a mage. No questions asked. If you wanted to heal the ghoul, go on the village, attack the mage, and you're going to heal. You're going to be a nuisance to uh, er eradicate on the village. I don't agree with the ghoul being on this 12, uh, 15 village. I would have liked to see the ghoul on 10 18 the ghoul would have you know been in a healing position would have poisoned this mage and would have been a 60 percent defense which would have forced the enemy hero to attack the ghoul rather than any other target again he took the cav however at what cost and with what delay and let's see now the ghost has to be the unit to take the village i feel um he needs to attack this mage though and if this mage suffers a lot of damage i feel that the ghost should come and finish off oh the ghost can't really reach it because there's only one tile left no there is there is sorry there's a tile for the ghost so if the adept deals a lot of damage to this mage the ghost can come in and finish off the job no he doesn't do it and he doesn't attack the mage or will he this is really important he he will he attack it will he not Wow, okay, so don't agree with this. I feel that he should have taken a risk on his leader. I understand maybe there was a chance to kill. Uh, however, he should have taken that risk at this point. I feel that he's in a much worse situation than he realizes simply because, well, uh, there's a, a red leader uh, and units are going to kill his adepts. Um, with this being said, um this particular horseman is going to so there was no point in that the horseman is going to go for adepts anyway i feel that um if 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 red if blue would have gone for this blue is not in a position to take risks blue is ahead I, this is what i feel at this point so he has this village that he can grab at any time he has these units which are absolutely bullying these other units on the right hand side so he will be able to grab villages and be a nuisance he is right where he wants to be with his heavy infantrymen next to the archers he should be recruiting some spearmen 
to be a no spearman game that would be interesting and there you go another unit dead on the right hand side most likely yeah it happened and now this is going to become a problem so but for this reason i said red is not ahead he hasn't recruited in a long time and he needs to recruit asap he should have killed that calf so he could have gone recruiting and if he had he recruited now he would have been able to counterattack this horseman and it it's like a domino game right it all every single move affects the next so uh, let's see how this plays out red needs luck if he's not praying then he should so there come the infantrymen they will be food for these adepts if the adepts can stay alive now i expect this leader to go on the mountain and basically demolish this skeleton archer oh no he's going for the adept that is really interesting i would have not expected that i'm guessing his plan is to get the heavy infantryman on the village and basically he's going to say if heavy infantry if i manage to kill the adepts heavy infantryman will absolutely shine even at night which i of course i agree with however he's getting a lot of retaliation damage on his leader and he's attacking a 60 percent target and his mages are i would say pretty useless at this time of day so this is i i feel a bit of inaccuracies from both players oh <laughs> Oh, never mind. Scrap everything I said because um, Short Cat has magic damage, heavy infantrymen. This particular guy here did 2 out of 2 versus 60%. This particular guy here did 2 out of 2 versus 60%. Magic, heavy infantrymen, absolutely unbelievable. So forget what I said. Forgot about Short, short Cat's um, um, magic, heavy infantrymen. And he's going for the archer because he's on 60 percent but he now he won't have a unit to finish off this or will he no he won't he won't have a unit to finish off that archer he's going to use the, the the mage for village grabbing simply because it's relatively useless at night and now i feel that if blue plays relatively carefully he should be able to kill this mage I feel that he could even go for a chance to kill on the leader. Look, look, he has a chance to kill at this point. If this fencer doesn't cover the blue leader, he basically can use his archer, another archer, another archer, and the adept. So this is a really important moment. The fencer needs to cover the blue leader, and he must. Okay, and he is indeed covering the red leader. Um, now, red is suddenly in a difficult situation once again. He, oh no <laughs> oh this game is just all over the place i've just noticed that blue in his unit killing frenzy and his village grabbing frenzy he actually disregarded the fact that red can actually get this particular keep so if red gets this particular keep and he recruits let's say two i don't even know two ghouls let's say or, or two archers or two ghouls right to deal at least some poison damage versus these heavy infantrymen and be at least a bit resistant to these mages i feel that suddenly red is in a in a great position however it's a great risk so he, he will need to place this particular skeleton archer on the mountain reduce, reduce the area against his leader he would then need to come with the ghost on this side and he will have to take a risk however this can be uh this can be the defense that red needed so let's see if um this what will happen on this particular side so there is the inevitable attack on the adept which i don't agree with why because now the adept is within eight if you look here at the experience the undead is within eight points eight experience points of leveling up so that is again a slight mistake from our uh and again the magic heavy infantrymen missed this is i can't i can't simply believe that that is like really I mean, this guy here is like look uh, you're embarrassing me how can you just not hit that it's just it's just embarrassing it's like okay you didn't see that anyway uh it's basically embarrassment all over the board with this heavy infantryman 
um, it's it's not able to hit versus 60 percent how can that be and now our red leader did a cautious move once again i don't agree with it he should have been on this keep attacking this heavy infantryman then another attack so this archer should have been here leader here leader during night deals quite a lot of damage versus heavy infantryman so leader here attacking the heavy infantryman then this particular archer here attacking the heavy infantryman then this adept finishing off the heavy infantryman and leveling up and then one more unit to just you know be the ghost covering up this and then this particular ghoul covering up this particular side and the ghost covering up this particular side you have to take risks you have to be bold if you want to win these units are going to take ages to reach these villages in this keep i feel that red should have been a bit bolder at this point let's see what he recruits archers and of course adepts and more archers not more adepts that is absolutely fine and he grabs this village which i think it's a bit let's see yeah it's a bit useless there's no need for him to grab this village he should have been back into the fight um this village is going to go anyway to the horseman so um that's not how i would have played it now he gets the keep with the ghost that's not you should have put your leader here you know uh, the ghost is going to melt this red mage so it's going to attack the heavy infantryman and at the same time again look exactly the moves except leader should have been here imagine how much damage the, look five imagine how much damage the leader would have dealt to this 30 percent heavy infantryman it would have been absolutely huge now he needs two out of two with the dark adept and that is that may or may not happen so this is really important here if he gets this kill he's in a great position if had he had he used his leader he would have only needed one out of two now he needs two out of two will it happen or not oh and it doesn't happen imagine the extra damage from the red leader that would have been a level up instead this particular adept will most likely die to the damage that will be dished out by this horseman and by all the other units this particular skeleton archer will probably die for this fencer there is nowhere for this skeleton archer to hide he might as well deal some damage versus the mage again i feel that um mage would have been a better choice with the skeleton archer attacking the mage maybe this after it died would be the ghoul attacking the mage and then this particular adept getting the kill and then this archer somehow well it's it, he should he needed the leader here and he needed two reinforcements and it would have been red's game right there and then okay a bit of damage on the fencer not that not that impactful now again there's no there's no time to heal up your units i feel it's just useless he should have dealt damage this particular soldier is not going to survive you need to sacrifice him deal the damage and then die because you're gonna die anyway there's no reason to try to so and the ghoul what's the point of a ghoul healing up um and now the ghost is gonna be probably most likely cleared up by these mages three out of three painful to watch however he did have two mages the ghost would have been cleared up anyway and now instead of the red leader here he's going to have uh, imagine the ghouls here restricting movements two ghouls uh instead he will have uh the red mage uh probably wow look at the damage from this look at the just look at the damage it's absolutely ridiculous that's why he needed the ghouls to restrict all this movement anyway uh we are going to probably see also this dark adept die which is incredibly sad uh there could have been two units absolutely stomping the loyalist I am rooting here for the underdog, as you could probably see, simply because Undead, I believe, ha is at a disadvantage in this matchup. And from here on, with Red Leader having 10 villages, maybe 11 now, and recruiting right next, right at Undead's doorstep, I truly believe it's only a matter of time before... Okay, this is just embarrassing. You're embarrassing our magic infantrymen cast so um that we didn't see that so there there is some some hope at least i wouldn't call it hope at least keeping alive the red player and i'm just going to do continuous replay from here on 
because I feel that this is going to be a... <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm gonna stop here a bit and analyze. So I was expecting this horseman, that would have been the logical thing to do, this horseman to grab this far away village. However, he decided to fight, giving some hope to the red player. Now, this particular infantryman is also in trouble and actually, with the horseman gun, this ghoul can actually apply some real pressure on the right-hand side. So mistake after mistake, keeping this game somehow alive, uh, if he manages to get some hits with the, uh, he will get he will get hits with the other deck. To be honest, that would just be ridiculous. Yes, so red players somehow clinging on to this game, it is unbelievable. Um, he has done. So these are the statistics for Korg. He did lose more units and he does have less villages. So I don't see going this going his way. However, look how much damage. Archers deal during the night to these heavy infantrymen on 30% or 40% leader here came any move I really should stop saying that I just feel that that would have been a way for our red player to win uh, Okay, that is always nice to see horsemen missing two out of two, but I feel that no matter what It's gonna be some unit exchanges here day is coming So these units will not going to be able to do much they are just going to be punching bags for whatever melee units blue player decides to recruit. And I would say I have to, you know, give props to Shortcat. He won this game without recruiting any spearmen. I hope he doesn't recruit any spearmen until the end. Okay. <laughs> it's just funny to see these heavy infantrymen uh, miss after he was hitting two out of two versus 60%. Uh, and more horsemen. Why not? No spearmen game for from our um a blue player and now he can just breathe easy he knows he's got this he has three villages yeah three villages extra no units for red and this is just a, a matter of time i feel he does get the village and he does recruit these bass to try to pillage back however i feel that is not going oh and two out of two from the horseman that must have hurt and uh of course the heavy infantrymen have decided that they can also miss there is some counter pillaging here going on, so we should probably talk about this as well. However, these heavy infantrymen have reverted back to their two out of two hits. Mages even hit, and it's just too little too late. This particular run by should have happened ages ago. I don't see how... Um, okay, 18 versus the bat. That's why it's difficult to have bad spillaging. That's why the ghost would have been so much better and so much better use. And let's see what happens here. Our, our blue player still has 11 villages, so although this counter pillaging looks somewhat spectacular, I can assure you it is not. Um, okay, there is the level one bat and... Okay, that, that hurt. Three out of three with the mage. Um, it's just it just feels that uh, blue has better units for pillaging than, than red. So cabs can actually deal damage once they finish pillaging. And you see, I mean, having these adepts on villages. Oh, that was just basically saying I won the game. I don't really care. Uh, and I <laughs> is actually red gonna make a comeback? It seems that these players, they both make mistakes and the other <laughs> comes back, but never mind. As I say that, there is two out of two from our heavy infantryman, absolutely adding insult to injury. And there is uh, the final stand. This should have been done back here. You should have taken the keep aggressively back there. And there is the good game. And our uh, red player is um, has finally decided to concede and i hope you guys liked it it was a spectacular game a fun game we've learned a lot simply because again i props to, to both players really trying hard under pressure um you are let's say um you are make you are you are bound to make mistakes right you have to it's really difficult to keep your composure under pressure so props to them i'm sure they tried their, their hardest but they did make, I think, both of them mistakes and a lot of them at key moments. I, I feel that this game could have gone either way. Um, blue player was had a bit more chances to end the game quicker, I feel. But red player did have one or two 
critical chances, but he could have taken a bit more risks and absolutely crushed the loyalist attack. I just, I just have this feeling that it was, it was, it was Blue's game to to lose. He did make some some pretty bad mistakes. For example, leaving the the, the keep uncovered, and then Red did not capitalize on it. Anyway, I hope you guys liked it. I hope it was educational, and we learned that sometimes you need to take risks in order to win the game. There is nobody there that is going to win the game for you. You are the only one that needs to win it for yourself. With this being said, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you later.